Well, the time has come. It is the 13th episode of MLP Season 9, before this season goes on hiatus. Which will be a time where we'll all be just sitting back for a while, relaxing, and some of us will be getting ready to depart for Baltimore, Maryland one last time. Okay, that intro got pretty depressing. Hello everyone, this is Frostcloud on my Mr. Chaos the Cunning Wolf channel. And as I have just stated, it is the 13th episode of MLP Season 9, and it is called Between Dark and Dawn. Now, I have heard that this is going to be a Celestia and Luna episode, and apparently they're going to be going on vacation, so... Need I even say more? This ought to be good. <laughs> or at least entertaining. So, without further ado, let's just get to it. Teleportation spell should pause, interloper! Stay back, friends. My sister and I <laughs> will take care of the beast. <laughs> okay, this is awesome. Sometimes we've actually needed their help, and they show up for this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that was too perfect. That's just what I was about to do. Oh, goodness, sister. That was fun. <laughs> Thank us. To be honest, we've recently realized we love. <laughs> what are they having a midlife crisis or something? <laughs> experiencing life instead of just dreaming about it and making a difference outside the throne room. <laughs> Y'all think they're gonna be doing this a lot? <laughs> I seriously wonder if they're having a midlife crisis. <laughs> Seems very dangerous. That seems more like a trap door to me. Ooh. <laughs> okay, that seems like something that would fit more in Canterlot, not Ponyville. <laughs> of all people to something. And then they carried Granny Smith across the street. There wasn't even any traffic. It's not that we don't appreciate their help. But suddenly Celestia and Luna seem to think we can't do anything on our own. How are we supposed to learn to be rulers? Seriously, I, I still I still think they're going through a midlife crisis. Maybe the princesses changed their minds. Maybe they don't think we're up to the responsibility of protecting Equestria after all. Or maybe this week's just a one-time thing that'll never happen again. Ah! A strategy meeting. What is the danger this time? A rampaging beast? <laughs> <laughs> What's with these face angles? They look like Flim and Flam. A little bit. And we know you have way more important rulery things to do, so... <laughs> rulery? <laughs> Don't worry. We'll cover your palace duties. It'll be a good chance for us to practice for when you retire. Uh... You're sure you don't mind the extra effort? Shh. Thank you, Twilight. What a relief to <laughs> So, these two acting hilariously out of character, and we're gonna be getting Twilighting at the same time? Fun, not yet. <laughs> okay, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> planning our time off? A chance to do whatever we want. And you know what that means. Relaxation! <laughs> well, it's just that I... I spend each night in every pony's intense dream. Am I the only one who thinks that they're high? I mean, who can be this happy? I mean... <laughs> that's gonna be- that's gonna become a gif on Derby Burrow, I know it. If it's written down, I'm sure we can handle it. Have fun. One more thing. We're leaving you in charge of raising the sun and moon while we're gone. <gasps> We have a small part of our power in this amulet. You can activate it with your magic at any time. Okay, that is cool. And dusk. Ooh, that's not a terrifying level of 
responsibility or anything. We won't let you down. <laughs> it is. And that sort of reminds me of an idea I actually had for how the Tundra Bay Royal Guard functions in the city of Tundra Bay where Frost, where my OC Frost God lives. Rather than police radios, they have little glowing blue pearl-like things that they speak into and then other guards or other palace members can hear it. So it's kind of like the magical artifact equivalent of a radio, but I'm just saying this sort of reminds me of that. Remember, sister, from now on we are regular carefree ponies. Oh. Hey, this, this, this area is Maybe pretty similar to uh, where, where Tempest time. was when she was um, looking at the Celestia School for Gifted Unicorns. I don't know, the just area just seems similar. I said, there's a lot of little things <laughs> oh, <laughs> in this world. There's a lot of little things you gotta try. Just a pack of punchy plunges, other ponies I'll take. That a princess pony passed us right by. <laughs> okay, are we seeing everybody here? <laughs> and this bucket list is gonna be a peach. No pony knows you like <laughs> I can't stop smiling, this is just... <laughs> That one poster on the building is creepy. We offer our assistance as heads of the Royal Swanifying Committee. <laughs> what a relief! Thank you, but we have it all covered. Uh... Really? Well, good luck with that. <laughs> if we ask for help, it's just like admitting we're not as good at the job as Luna and Celestia. Hey, you gotta remember what Prince Rutherford learned. I mean, Piggy's gotta step in and remind everybody of that. Time we have tea, we can remember this magical day. <laughs> well, oh, that's glad you enjoyed oh. but now we're going to do something I've always wanted to do, but never could because of my night shift. Is it another zip line? No, it's the post office. It is indeed. Just think, all the Mabel and Ponyville goes through here. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> <laughs> One stamp, please. <laughs> Wait for it. You didn't need a stamp if you were just going to give this to me. Yes, but I didn't give it to you. A male pony took it from me, searched to find who it was meant for, <laughs> and gave it to you. It's about the process. <laughs> that no pony has ever explored the bottom of these caverns. <laughs> I wonder why. I have always wanted to try this. Isn't this wonderful, sister? Yeah, she looks like a toy with a bunch of stickers. There's a lot of little things you gotta do in this world. There's a lot of little things you ought to do. And I'm at a complete loss of words. Well, I hope you're enjoying yourself on your super relaxing picnic, sister. I would be if you hadn't made us hike through a million prickly bushes. Oh. Well, they hurt less than that horrible howling uh, Someone with a certain <laughs> fetish I know is gonna like that, but, yeah. What I'd like is a sister I can depend on! You mean boss around? Calm down, Luna! <laughs> <laughs> and don't you dare use your canterlot voice on me! I think this adventure would be better if I did it by myself! Fine! I just remembered something I forgot I always wanted to do. Be alone. Guess we have the same thing on both of our lists then. I mean, we've seen from. <laughs> I, I mean, we've seen from the episode of Royal Problem that they aren't the best at getting along. I mean, that's that's just their quirk. Was it two left turns and a right, or two right turns and a left? Always handled directions. Is this the same place Apple Bloom was in in uh, Bloom and Bloom? Just a cockatrice can't. Scared away. The chickens. Wait. 
normal ch Okay, I'm not judging. Oh, the sun and the moon together? At the same time? Now where have I seen that before? <laughs> this that needs to be censored. <laughs> you think maybe Twilight's having trouble with the amulet? We should probably go help her. <laughs> okay, okay. I think I got it. Sunburst says we just need to reset the amulet with this. Turn the screw on the back. And no more than one half turn. <laughs> Does any pony have some tape? <laughs> I don't think tape's gonna save you. <laughs> that was another amazing one. <laughs> Wow, two amazing episodes in a row. <laughs> I mean, you all saw how I thought of the previous episode, The Last Crusade, but this... <laughs> For me, this felt like the best of two worlds. Like, yeah, okay, putting the whole, oh, this is another episode dedicated to <laughs> Princess Celestia and Princess Luna just having fun, but they also got a song, Lot of Little Things, and <laughs> this... Kind of like Better Way to Be Bad from Frenemies. This was also just a fun, catchy song. Like I said, catchy songs aren't usually my thing, but I don't hate them either. So, this was a good song. I really liked it. I especially liked the reprise, too. But this episode felt like the best of both worlds for me. The fandom will probably just look more to the whole princesses and what they're doing in this episode rather than what the main six were trying to do, trying to hold down the forts in Canterlot, but <laughs> this felt like the best of both worlds because I saw a little bit of twilighting out and <laughs> the highlight of this episode, the interaction between the two princesses, so th this just felt like two great things. It does bother me just a tad bit how Pinky didn't chime in and say, hey, Prince Rutherford sort of learned the same thing because we all know that he learned that it's okay to ask for help back and not asking for trouble. I'm just saying it's a bit of a missed opportunity there, but that's not enough to affect my final paw ranking because really everything comes together in the end anyway. And they bring back that big turtle thing to eat garbage. I guess the thing that's gonna eat everything. I, I can only imagine how its breath is gonna smell. Maybe it smells worse than that big frog thing that Rainbow Dash and Rarity met in the episode. The end in a friend. But let's get to the main topic at hand. Let's get to the elf. well no. In this case, let's get to the turtle creature in the room because that matches this episode's theme. The interaction between Princess Luna and Princess Celestia. Now, by the ending, I figured that this is just a quirk of theirs. Sometimes they're not gonna get along, but they're siblings. All siblings fight about things, regardless of what age they are. And I bet a lot of siblings can relate to the princesses in this situation, because one minute they're having a good time, and then the next they're pretty much verbally fighting each other. But of course, by the end they come out stronger than ever before. And now I know not all siblings are like that. Some decide to just go separate it forever, because, because the differences they have they just can't solve. But some siblings can. And for some reason this episode felt like it didn't really have a moral in it. It just felt like it was supposed to be a fun episode, kind of like the 200th episode was. That episode also felt like it wasn't really about any sort of lesson, but it was just about having fun. And this was sort of that. I mean, we're halfway through the final season for Celestia's sake. We gotta celebrate this milestone in some way, and well... <laughs> This was the way to do it. In a way, this sort of felt like a Royal Sisters variant on All Bottled Up. And what I mean is, here's the two princesses going off to just have some nice, <laughs> young fun, because that's why I always say maybe they're going through a midlife crisis. <laughs> but we also have the main six staying back at, obviously, their castle and taking care of a task, kind of like Starlight was doing. She was doing some task while the main six were away to play that teamwork game, but she ends up getting into a bit of an altercation with Trixie, when she keeps winding her up and making her keep all of her anger into a bottle until she eventually just has to let it out to not feel tired and have all the energy just sucked out of her. So this sort of felt like the roles were switched around, only Starlight and Trixie went on to evolve. Well, I mean, we did see Trixie appear, but she was just silent pulling her carriage. <laughs> but that's what it sort of felt like to me. And I just love seeing just <laughs> Princess Celestia and Princess Luna when they were just chiming in to save the- They are pretty much acting like superheroes. 
<laughs> it kind of it kind of reminds me a bit of the premise of pretty much the entire Incredible series. Well, no, really the first one. The whole idea of Bob wanting to save the day even after superheroes were made illegal. This sort of feels almost like the same thing. <laughs> they kind of have that attitude of, we're never too old to have fun, we're never too old to save the day. <laughs> and Rainbow Dash's comment on saying, wow, just now they decide to help us, <laughs> that was too perfect. <laughs> it seemed like not too long ago we were hearing her say in the premiere, uh, they almost never help. But, but now they just did the complete opposite. <laughs> I bet Nicole Oliver and Tabitha St. Germain were just having an absolute blast with this episode. I'm just picturing them in the recording booth. Just... <laughs> Seriously, this, this is probably one of the funniest episodes I have ever seen. Right next to Frenemies and the Saddle Row Review, I'd say this is not only one of the most fun, but one of the funniest episodes I've seen in the series. <laughs> And I am proud to say that this episode also gets a blue glowing 10 out of 10. And believe me, I'm not just spouting out undeserving blue glowing 10 out of 10s to just a bunch of episodes, because I really do believe that this has been an excellent record of some of the greatest episodes I've ever seen. Of course I edit them out, but I take long silent pauses to think of anything that bugged me in it, or anything that I found just to be a tiny flaw, but... No, I honestly didn't find anything. Now, I'm not positively sure if it comes with being on the autism spectrum, but when I watch something even just once, I can rewatch it in my head on camera so I can memorize the things that happened so I can talk about them. So I'm basically re-reacting to it in my head. It's... I don't mean to sound egotistical here, but it is a truly beneficial ability to have, especially when you're this type of YouTuber like me. But this episode was just amazing. Would I say it's more my favorite than the previous episode, I'd say it's just about equal because, I mean, you all know that I absolutely loved the previous episode, The Last Crusade, but this, this felt like it was not just funny and <laughs> just some fan service seeing another <laughs> princess episode, but it felt like everything that could have possibly been done right was done right. We even got a song for Celestia's sake. <laughs> Should I also say Luna's sake so that she feels a little bit more equal, but I tend to replace good lord with good Luna because it's kind of the same word a bit. You, you, you know what I mean. And looks like after this episode we're officially on hiatus, or I, bet, I guess we're on our break. <laughs> uh, and um, I've actually recorded all of my reactions to these past four episodes all the way from episode 10 going to seed. Because I've heard that uh, the episodes were apparently leaked early in Italy, and I found a site where I could download all of them and just record them ahead of time. So, what I'm going to be doing after this is just editing them all, and then scheduling them to be uploaded on my channel on the Saturdays that said episodes come out, because I don't want to get into trouble with, you know, early uh, spoiling things. Even though I cut parts out to fall under fair use, we all know how broken YouTube's copyright system is nowadays, so I don't like taking risks. Yeah, and I also look forward to the special that I heard that's apparently supposed to be coming out this June 29th called The Rainbow Road Trip. So, yeah, I I've heard that the animation style may be different. I don't know, but if it is, I'm definitely intrigued to see it. Anyways, that was my reaction to MLP Season 9, Episode 13, <laughs> Between Dark and Dawn. Thank you all for joining me once again. Keep it frosty, and have a wonderful day. Roha.